Is Mega Man 3 the best game in the series? While there are big fans for any entry in the franchise, Mega Man 2 and 3 are by far the most popular. Personally, I slightly prefer Mega Man 2's weapon suite, but there are lots of strong arguments as to why Mega Man 3 is the superior game. The biggest new addition is the slide maneuver. By holding down while pressing the button for jump, Mega Man can quickly dodge obstacles or projectiles, and can now fit through tight spaces. The slide would become a series staple, and was included in every Mega Man game until number 9, where it was removed in favor of a simpler experience that more closely mirrors the second game. Mega Man 3 is also the first appearance of Mega Man's dog, Rush. Instead of the generic numbered platforms from the previous game, Mega Man can now rely on his trusty canine companion for platforming assistance. While the Rush Jet and the Rush Marine upgrades must be earned, the jump-boosting Rush Coil is available from the game's outset. In addition to Rush, Mega Man 3 also introduces Proto Man, Mega Man's brother. He's a mysterious figure in this game, and appears within several of the game's levels to test Mega Man's skills. In the Japanese version, his name is Blues, which fits into the game's musical theme. When publisher Capcom localized the game for English-speaking players, they decided that the name Blues was confusing for a red character, and changed the name to Proto Man despite protests from the Japanese team. Proto Man and Rush are just a smaller part of an effort to introduce more story into the game. Instead of a simple tale of revenge, this time series antagonist Dr. Wily seems to have changed his evil ways, and is now helping Dr. Light design a large peacekeeping robot named Gamma. When eight robot masters go rogue and steal the components for Gamma, Mega Man must spring into action and recover the stolen parts. Development for the game was very challenging. The lead supervisor from the first two games, Akira Kitamura, had quit working for Capcom, and artist Keiji Inafune had to take on a lot of his responsibilities. Because Mega Man 2 had been such a big hit, there were high expectations for the sequel, and very tight deadlines. In the end, despite the final game selling well and being well received by critics, Inafune still feels like they could have made a better game if they just had more time. Even with Inafune's reservations, when the game released in North America and Japan in 1990, it was a big hit. Capcom kept the tradition going with bad North American box art, although this one is better than most. Mega Man 3 didn't reach Europe until 1992, but it was successful there as well. All told, it sold over 1 million copies, making it the 65th best-selling NES game of all time. Critics applauded the enhanced gameplay with the slide maneuver, the crisp, colorful graphics, and of course, the incredible soundtrack. Harumi Fujita was the original composer for the game, but she had to drop out of the project after giving birth and only made a handful of the tracks. The rest were composed by Yasuaki Fujita, and while he has the same last name, the two are unrelated. Some critics felt the game was just too difficult. Unlike Mega Man 2, which featured selectable difficulties, this game's only mode is hard. To make it more accessible, Capcom was very generous with the E-Tanks this time, allowing Mega Man to hold more of them, and he'll find them more frequently. The game can certainly be beaten without E-Tanks, but I have a feeling that if they hadn't been included, this would easily be one of the most difficult NES games ever made. Modern critics still appreciate this entry in the prolific Mega Man franchise. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Mega Man 3 at number 16. If you want to play Mega Man 3 on a modern platform, it is available as part of the Mega Man Legacy Collection for PS4, Xbox One, 3DS, Nintendo Switch, and Steam. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. 
The robot master bosses are much more difficult this time, and no amount of energy tanks can save you from instant death pits and spike traps. But what if I told you about an easy way to start the game with 9 energy tanks? What if I told you about a secret trick to get the very useful rush jet enhancement early? And what if I told you the best way to defeat all of the game's difficult bosses? Even Super Robot Gamma himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new episodes. Let's get started. Alright, Mega Man 3. Before we get started, let's talk about some cheat codes. Unlike any of the other main entries in the series, this is the only Mega Man I can remember with straight up cheats. We won't be using any of them during the main run, but they are worth mentioning. If you hold up and A on controller 2, you can freeze most enemies in place. It may also freeze Mega Man, and it doesn't work on every enemy, but it surprisingly does work on the Robot Masters, which can't fight back when you use this trick. If you hold right on controller 2, Mega Man will do a super jump. He can even jump so high that he can escape from instant death pits. Even more interesting, if you wait long enough to jump out of the pit, you'll have no health so enemies won't be able to damage you. You'll be invincible, but you won't be able to use your arm cannon anymore, although you can still use any weapons that you've taken from bosses. However, if you gain back any health, the invincibility will end. One more trick that will make the game much easier is to use a password to start with 9 energy tanks. Just place a red marker at A6 and start the game. It's that simple. So which boss should we battle first? If you look at the Robot Master damage chart, you'll see that Top Man and Magnet Man can both be defeated more easily with the Arm Cannon than other bosses. Of the two, Top Man will help us get the Shadow Blades faster, and that's one of the best weapons in the game. His stage is also the easier one to get through. The first enemies that we're going to encounter here in Top Man stage are these Boltons. The Boltons are invincible until they're fully locked together and start moving towards you, so the key here is to not advance the screen too much to the right where they'll start to swarm you. Same thing for this frog-like Mecha Keru enemy. It'll bounce around, and if you're standing on the same level as it, you won't be able to hit it until it jumps, so basically you want to start shooting near one of those guys, and hope it goes right into your line of fire. At the top of the screen here, we can refill our health, and then go down this ladder, but don't drop down it. You want to extend down to the bottom of the ladder, and then shoot that Kuma Saburu enemy from the bottom. After that, just head on down the ladder on the left, and we'll have our first opportunity to use the Rush Coil. Rush Coil will let us jump higher, so if we place it here and bounce off of it, we can slide under and collect that energy. And down here, we can refill the weapon. Here, we just want to slide off and slide off again. That'll get you underneath those boltons and safely across that spike bed. Once we get down here, we'll encounter another new enemy. This relative of the hard hat is called the Pickle Man Bull. I can't make this stuff up. If we use a rush coil here, we can bounce up and fight another Pickle Man Bull. It only takes three shots to the head to take him out, and then we can slide under and grab an extra life and some more health. Here's some generic hard hats. You want to shoot them and then carefully avoid the shots. They cannot be damaged when their hat is down. In here we'll fight a mini-boss, a robot cat. 
jump over the balls of yarn and shoot the cat as much as you can. The yarn balls can be destroyed, but the cat will just make more, or it will shoot robot fleas at you, so you're better off just trying to avoid those yarn balls and keep up the shots on the cat. Here's another Kuma Saburu. Just shoot him and shoot the tops that he shoots out as well. And over here, we'll fight another robot cat. This one's a little bit easier because we have more space, although since the yarn balls will go off the screen, you will see the flea attack this time. Climb on up the ladder and carefully take out this hard hat enemy, then just pop on over to the left and then back to the right to pick up this health. I'm not really seeing the top theme here. This is more of a futuristic greenhouse. What do you think they're growing here? I imagine that the development team already had designed this level and just shoehorned in the top elements later. Speaking of tops, on these ones they alternate, so you want to hang out on the ones that are going up for a while, but don't linger on the ones that are moving down. And that's it. We've made it to the boss's room. This is Top Man. Move into the room a little bit, and then slide under his first barrage of tops. He's invincible whenever he's spinning around, so you want to jump over him and then shoot him a few times at close range, then slide away to both avoid the boss's top attack, but also to get ready to jump over him again. So jump over, shoot him at close range, slide away from the tops, and then wait, jump over, shoot at close range. That's all you need to do. Top Man is really not that hard to defeat, and once he's beaten, we will gain his weapon, the Top Spin. The Top Spin is both extremely powerful and incredibly awkward. You can only use it while you're jumping, and it makes Mega Man do a little pirouette in the air. That can damage the enemies and does extreme damage to some bosses, like Shadow Man who we're going to face next. Shadow Man has a lava-themed level, sort of like Heat Man from Mega Man 2, because I know whenever I think about shadows, I think of volcanic eruptions. Okay. Down here, there's some more Mecha Karos, and then another Pickle Man Bull. Three shots to the face will take out the Pickle Man, and then we'll have our first fight with Proto Man. The key to beating Proto Man is to not jump. He will keep shooting these projectiles up in the air, so as long as you stay on the ground and slide underneath him when he gets nearby, you should be able to score a lot of hits, and you'll never get hit by his shots. This walking eyeball enemy is called a Peter G, and they are very easy to destroy with our arm cannon. We can't jump high enough to take out that darkness spot, so we just have to deal with it. You'll need to jump when you're at the bottom there to get over those obstacles that are hidden in the darkness. The Peter Cheese are easy to destroy, but we need to be careful of these walking bombs. Wait for that one and make sure you jump far enough to get to the other side. You don't want to end up down in the pit there where that walking bomb will be attacking you. Whenever you shoot the walking bombs, they explode, and that explosion can actually deal you damage, so you need to hit them from far away. And when you get to the end here, you'll just drop down, and we made it to the next part of the stage. That Mecha Karo can definitely damage you if you're not careful. Try to take this next one out while it's jumping at you in the air. Same thing with this one. They're much easier if you can catch them in the air like that, or if you can catch them from the lower level. We're almost to the end, but these parachuting Parasayu enemies can knock you out of the air and land you in the instant death lava. Instead, you want to move slowly here, take out each one as you go, and stay far to the left. You can also try using your top spin, which does take them out, but you'll notice that it alters your jump trajectory and can definitely mess you up. You might use topspin and end up in the lava, so I recommend just using your arm cannon and don't be hasty and jump over to the end there. You want to summon that Mecha Karu first. Over here we'll see this dragonfly-like Yambo. He will try to get behind you, so either shoot him from behind or jump over. And that's it. We've made it to the boss's room. Let's equip our topspin, 
It's time to fight Shadow Man. Shadow Man hops around a lot, and that's good. We want to jump at him and catch him in the air with the top spin. And soon enough, we'll be dancing on his grave. It's just that easy with the top spin. For our troubles, we get the Shadow Blades and the Rush Marine upgrade. And in Mega Man 3, there is no straightforward boss order where you can always have the very best weapon to beat every boss. So we need to decide where to go next, and we're going to go to Gemini Man stage. I have a special way of defeating Gemini Man using the Shadow Blades, so by beating him here, this is going to fix the boss order for us. The Shadow Blades are actually just the best weapon in the game, and we can see what they do here. They're like a toned down version of the Metal Blades from Mega Man 2. You can only shoot these ones in 5 directions instead of 8, so you can't shoot them downwards. They don't have quite the same range, and they can't be shot out as quickly, but they do have this boomerang property, which is very awesome. They also don't seem to consume too much weapon energy, which is nice, so you can use it just as a standard weapon. And that's what we're going to do as we traverse the surface of Gemini Man stage. The flying eyeballs are called Nitrons, and the penguins are called Bomber Pepes. So make sure to take out any Nitrons you see before moving forward, and watch out for the Bomber Pepes. The last thing that you want is to get hit in the air when you're jumping, and land in an instant death pit. Over here we'll encounter Proto Man, but we don't have to fight him this time. He's just covering up for the fact that the game is loading. Once he blows that up, you can jump and curve a bit to the left and you'll be able to grab an extra life, and if you use your rush coil, you can get that health on the right side. Over here we're going to encounter some eggs, and we'll want to use our rush coil to get up on the higher level here, and then we can start shooting the eggs with our arm cannon. Whenever you shoot them, a pole will emerge, so shoot the pole, and then we can try to refill some of our stuff. There are often a lot of drops when you're fighting the enemies here. So shoot the eggs to get up to the higher platform if you want to pick up that question mark. The question mark could be pretty much anything, including an extra life or an E-Tank, but this time it's just a small weapon refill. Drop down and shoot out more of the eggs. I guess that the eggs do fit the twin theme here in a loose way. Kind of a cool looking level though, with the different changing blocks in the background. They seem like they're rippling. Make your way to the right and climb up the ladder. Here we'll have some more eggs that turn into bowls, so shoot them out until you reveal the ladder, and then climb on up. When we come up here, I'm going to show you how to do a secret trick. You can use any weapon refill for this, but we'll use this one up here. If you select the shadow blades and then press to the right, you'll see that Rush takes his jet form. If you give it some weapon energy, then we can actually use the Rush Jet, even though we haven't earned it from beating Needleman yet. And you'll see that once you've actually used it, it's now a permanent part of your inventory. Pretty neat. We are going to get the Rush Jet legitimately soon enough, so we're not going to abuse this trick. So if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. But it is very convenient to have Rush Jet early. Watch out for the Yambows that creep up from behind, and this guy is called a Pen Pen Maker. You just need to shoot it between the eyes, and the Shadow Blades are quite effective against this guy. But you do want to watch out for the Pen Pens that it will keep shooting out of the door at the bottom. There's only two of those that need to be removed, and then you can drop down to the next area, where we can pick up some much needed health. Use the Rush Coil to bounce up to the health, and then drop down on the left, where we will finally hit the water. We can use Rush Coil to get up here and head over to the right, but it's much easier if we just use our Rush Marine upgrade, and this is one of the only places in the game where there actually is water, so we might as well take advantage of it when we can. These torpedo fish are called Gyarabos, and you may need to jump out of the water to refill your weapon energy so that your Rush Marine doesn't disappear. 
but just keep shooting to the right to take out the fish and move up and down to avoid the yambals which will attack from behind and eventually you'll get to the right side where you can hop out of the water and move to the rightmost platform where you can turn off your rush marine and then hop up and grab that energy tank. Then jump back down and climb up the ladder. There's a couple mechakarus here and at the top we're going to find the boss's room but first there's a Vicky sub boss which can easily be defeated by just shooting him from the ladder. You don't want to get damaged by that guy? Then just drop down and enter the boss's room. The search snakes deal the most damage to Gemini Man, but he's actually very exploitable if we use the shadow blades with their boomerang action. Move to the center of the screen, and you'll notice that they won't shoot unless you shoot, so you want to wait until the one on the right jumps, and then you fire your shadow blade to the right, and jump over the one that's coming to the left, who will get hit by the boomerang action. Once there's only one Gemini man left, you can easily take him out because he moves slowly and doesn't even fire the laser very often. And that's it. It's just that easy. For defeating Gemini Man, we'll get the Gemini Laser, which is a very powerful weapon, but it's slow, and if you miss with it, it'll start ricocheting off of walls, and we won't be able to shoot it again or change to a different weapon until it's done doing that. Now, before we move on, there's a few tricks I want to show you here with Gemini Man stage. If you slide before the screen transition there, and make a big jump at the end of your slide, you can actually skip that Proto Man cutscene, and then we'll have no music when we're down here in the bottom. But that's not the only thing it does. It'll also glitch out the Pen Pen Maker, and turn it into this weird thing. Pretty interesting. One more thing I want to show, if you don't have the Rush Marine upgrade, but you do have Sparkman's weapon, we can do a similar trick to what we did with Rush Jet, so just highlight Sparkman and go to the right, fill it up with some weapon energy, and you will have Rush Marine without having earned it. This is not as convenient as getting Rush Jet early, because you won't use Rush Marine very much, but it is worth mentioning. The next boss that we're going to choose is Needleman. We'll encounter a new enemy type here at the beginning of Needleman stage, the Hari Harry. We can shoot Hari Harrys with our new Gemini Beam, and it only takes a single shot to take them out. You want to shoot at them kind of low because they can start shooting out needles, and the needle may absorb your Gemini Beam. That guy can also do an invincible rolling attack at you, so you want to take them out as quickly as possible. Down here at the bottom we can refill our Gemini Beam, and then we'll switch over to the Shadow Blades to take out these cannons. The cannons are invincible whenever they're closed, but whenever they're open they're extremely vulnerable to Shadow Blades, which take them out in a single shot. We can use an angled shot to take out those cannons, and then go underneath this hard hat and shoot him from below. Watch out for this Yambao enemy, and take out another hard hat from an angle. Keep making your way to the right. There's two more hard hats here. The second one you need to jump after you shoot. And then we can come over to the ladder, where we can climb down and enter the next part of the stage. Down here we'll encounter the needle press enemies, which can't be destroyed, and you'll need to slide to avoid them. You can just get up on the edge of the platform there, jump over and watch out for that one. It could knock you off the platform, and then you'll end up in the pit below. We'll want to use our Gemini Beam here again. If you can shoot it underneath the needles, you'll be able to get him in a single shot. Then we can use our Rush Coil, and bounce up and grab an energy tank. Pretty nice. We can switch back to our arm cannon as we climb this ladder. At the top we'll encounter some Hammer Joe enemies. The Hammer Joes can only be damaged whenever their visor is open, and if we attack them from the ladder they won't be able to hit us with the hammers they throw. Stay on the ladder and take them out and they will give you no problems. Up at the top there's another Bicky enemy. This one we just want to slide under and get away from. And that's it. We've made it to the boss's room. Equip that Gemini Beam, it's time to fight Needleman. 
As soon as the fight starts, you want to shoot that beam. Even if it misses, it'll hit him on the rebound. And then you want to mostly shoot it when you're close to Needleman, because you don't want to miss. If you miss with the Gemini beam, it might ping pong around the room for a while, and you'll have to just dodge Needleman's attacks while you're waiting for it to dissipate. But that's it. He'll be easily defeated, and then we'll get both the Needle Cannon and the legitimate Rush Jet. The Needle Cannon is most effective against Snake Man, but we're not going to need Snake Man's weapon, so instead, we're going to go fight Magnet Man next. Magnet Man stage features everyone's favorite Mega Man staple, the disappearing Yoku blocks. But before we get to those, we should equip our Shadow Blades. They are the best way to deal with these Magnet Fly enemies, which can pick you up and they might just drop you off in an instant death pit. If one gets a hold of you though, you can shoot a Shadow Blade upward, and that will make them pretty easy to get rid of. If we drop down here on the right and pause the game at just the right time, we can actually hear an extended version of the Proto Man song. Kind of a fun trick, but not a very useful one. Whenever you're done listening to it, you can just unpause. And we're going to want to switch over to our arm cannon. We want to fight Proto Man the same way that we did in Shadow Man stage. So you don't want to jump. You just want to shoot at him and slide underneath him when he gets close. And you can get a lot of hits in on Proto Man whenever he's walking away from you. So that's your best opportunity to shoot him. And once he's taken enough damage, he'll fly away and blow up the floor on the left. Just a few Gemini beams will take out these giant springers, which normally would take quite a few more hits. If we hang on this ladder for a while, these two Peter Cheese will drop down to the bottom, and then we can just hold to the left as we drop off to avoid them. And down here, we'll fight a couple more of those Peter Cheese, but here we have to deal with this magnet which will pull us towards it. It won't damage you though, so you can actually touch it, but it is a sign of what's ahead. Don't just jump down this ladder, you want to climb over and then carefully leap off to the left if you want to pick up that energy. And here are those Yoku blocks. We can easily skip over them by simply using our Rush Jet. So just use your Rush Jet and fly all the way over to the right, where you'll be able to pick up a ladder and head on up to the next area. Now, if you think that this is cheating, I'll show you the way to do it without Rush Jet. I like to drop off the ladder onto that block and then jump to this one, which will lead to the highest block and take us up here. Over here we can drop down over onto that one, and then carefully walk off, avoiding the magnet. Here we want to wait for that block, and then we can easily make it in two jumps. And in this one, we only want to go on those high two blocks, that way you avoid the magnet below. But seriously, if you're having any problem with that, just use Rush Jet. A single angled shot will take out this shot man, and if you need to refill your weapon energy or health, you can take that ladder down on the left. But we're doing quite well right now, so we're just going to go through this giant springer and head on into the boss's room. With the Shadow Blades, Magnet Man is super easy. He's going to start hopping towards us, so just jump and attack him with some Shadow Blades. And when he gets close, he'll jump up in the air, and we can jump up underneath him and shoot the Shadow Blades upward, which will quickly take out Magnet Man before he can even do his magnetic pull attack. It's really just that easy. The Magnet Missiles that we earn for beating Magnet Man are actually quite awesome. They will home in on enemies, but they do use up a lot of weapon energy, so you won't be able to fire off too many of them. And our next boss is Hard Man. You'd think they'd have learned after Wood Man, but nope, they leaned all the way into it with Hard Man. Flaccidness won't even be an option whenever you encounter this guy's rocket-powered fists. Don't walk too quickly to the right. If you walk to the left, you can despawn some or all of the smaller chibis that the large bee drops. Otherwise, make sure to fight off all five of them, because they will continue to follow you until you get all the way to the ladder on the right. So take out all of the bees. 
See, that one will not just leave you alone. And then quickly slide to avoid those enemies that'll pop out and bite you. They cannot be destroyed. Same thing here, slide across, grab the health, and then jump up to the ladder. We can use our shadow blades to take out this hammer Joe without having to climb up there and deal with him. So he's very easy to hit with a few angled shots from over here on the right side. It will take four hits to remove him, and then you can use your rush coil to bounce up there. Climb up the ladder on the left, and up here we will fight some new enemies. These monkeys are called returning monkings. You don't want to get too close to them, instead you want to attack them when they're hanging from the ceiling using your shadow blades at an angle. If you get too close they'll drop down and attack you, so that's the best way to deal with those guys. Climb up the ladder on the right. If you need some help, we can hang on the ladder here and take out this Hammer Joe in a position where he won't be able to damage us, but we'll be able to damage him. Once you have that health refill, climb up the ladder. And there's another returning Mon King here. We can use the same strategy that we did before with the Shadow Blades so that he won't drop down and attack us. Up here at the top, there's going to be a Pickle Man Bull over on the right side, so we'll need to use either two Shadow Blades or three Arm Cannon Shots to take him out. It's probably a little bit easier by using the Shadow Blades, and if we come up here on the top, we'll be able to grab another E-Tank, and then we can take this ladder up. If you wanted to get that health, you needed to take the ladder down on the bottom on the right side, so if you did need it, that is the way to get up there. Up here, there are a lot of traps, so I recommend using the Rush Jet, that way you don't have to deal with them at all, and you can easily fly over the Chibis and just make your way to the right. This is the safest way to do this part. We're almost to the end here, but before we can fight Hard Man, we have to face off with Proto Man again, and this is the most difficult Proto Man battle in the game. Instead of just being on a flat surface, we have to fight him in this small tiered room, which is actually pretty annoying. He doesn't deal a ton of damage to you, so you should be able to beat him, but you just want to try to avoid him as best you can as he goes across the room, and attack him as much as you can whenever he's walking away from you. Down at the bottom we can get our health refilled a bit, and there's going to be a Bicky enemy down here, so we want to slide under him when he jumps up into the air. And that will bring us to the boss's room. This is Hard Man. We're going to equip our magnet missiles, but you don't want to shoot them off too fast. He gets a few invincibility frames between each hit, and if you shoot them too quickly, we'll waste a few, and you don't get a ton of energy on the magnet missiles. Ideally, you want to be jumping when he does that earthquake attack, which will minimize the amount of time that you're stunned. And just a few shots of the magnet missiles will take Hard Man down. He's actually pretty simple. The weapon we get here is called the Hard Knuckle, and it's a rocket-powered fist that looks like something that Orgasmo's sidekick would shoot. You can actually angle it up or down a bit by pressing up or down on the D-pad after you fire it, but it is a fairly slow-moving weapon. Next up is Sparkman, who looks like a giant spark plug. What a cool design! At the beginning here, there's a Peter Chi enemy walking around, so if we equip our Shadow Blades, we can actually shoot up through the platform and take it out. Climb up the ladder, and when we get to the top of the next ladder, this enemy cannot be destroyed, so we just need to be patient with it and wait until it's coming back our direction without the electricity going, so that's when you can jump through. These dispensers will drop these flying plugs called Alekans, which can be taken out with a single shot of either your arm cannon or the shadow blades. You want to remove them quickly, or they'll shoot a big shower of sparks which will go all over the place. Up here we can try out that hard knuckle, which can remove these hammer joes in a single hit. You still have to hit them when the visor's open though. This area is a bit dangerous, these platforms will rocket up and send you into the spikes above, so we're just going to use our rush jet to fly over for extra safety. 
Once you get to the other side, there's a few of those electricity machines that you'll need to avoid. And these ones are actually tricky to get through, so I usually just take a hit and then head on up the ladder on the right. Up here, there's going to be a health refill anyway, so we'll take out this Pickle Man Bowl and use our Rush Coil to bounce up to the higher platform. If you need to refill any of your weapons, this is another good time to do it, and we can refill our Rush Jet as we might use it a little bit at the very end of the stage. Head on up the ladder on the left. Here's a Peter Chi enemy, which we can easily take out with our arm cannon. And we just want to move forward here and drop down this shaft. When we have to repeat this level later, there will be a bunch of spikes here that we need to avoid, but for now this area is safe. Jump up onto this junk block and then quickly slide off the right side. That will get you off fast enough so that you won't get hit by the next junk block. If they start to build up, you'll have to shoot through them. Down here, we can refill any weapons that we're low on. We're going to be using Shadow Blades for the boss, so we'll make sure that we have enough of them. And down here, there's some of those Bolt-On enemies, which will try to knock us off these platforms. So our best bet here is to just use our Rush Jet. Fly down underneath the Bolt-Ons and make your way all the way over to the right. That's where we'll find the boss's room. You definitely don't want to get hit there and end up dead right before the boss's room. Just use your rush jet and you'll be safe. This is Sparkman. He does two different spark attacks. One where he shoots eight sparks in all directions, or just a large energy ball, but neither deal a lot of damage, so just stay close to him and attack him with the shadow blades and he will go down quite quickly. For beating him, we'll earn the Spark Shock, which is not the greatest weapon. It shoots out very quickly, and it can stun enemies, but sometimes stunning enemies is actually bad. I'll show you what I mean whenever we go into the next stage, which is Snake Man stage. The only one that's left at this point. As we get started here in Snake Man's level, let me show you what I'm talking about with this Spark Shock weapon. When I use it on this Dada enemy, he's frozen, but I can't jump through him when he's like that, you'll take damage. You also can't switch to another weapon to kill him, so it's not actually that useful to be able to do that. Instead, we'll use our Magnet Missiles on the Petite Snakeys and the Dada enemies, and the magnet missiles will get us through here very easily. Once you make it to the ladder on the right side, climb on up. And there are three petite snakies here. If we use our shadow blades, we can attack at an angle and remove them very easily. At the top of this next ladder, I'm going to show another secret trick. If we use our rush jet, we can fly over this mini boss, the big snakey. We don't have to fight it at all. Down here, we can switch back to our magnet missiles, and here's another new enemy type, the Paton. They are easily cleared with the magnet missiles, just like the Petite Snakeys are. At the top of this ladder, there's an excessive amount of health, so make sure to fill up before you head down. Down here, we're going to make our way to the right, and there is another new enemy type, so we want to switch over to our Shadow Blades. This guy's called a Boo Boo Con, and he has the pole that he vaults off of. You want him to vault over you with his pole. Don't hit the pole, you'll take damage from that. And when he's following you, you can use your shadow blades either by turning around and shooting at him, or by using the boomerang action to take him out. Easily remove that hammer, Joe, with your shadow blades and make your way up the ladder. Up here, we can take out this hammer, Joe, in the same way. And then if we take the ladder on the right, there's some power-ups up there. But if we don't need them, you can just take the ladder on the left. Over here, we'll hopefully be able to maybe refill some weapon energy, and well, that's what we got. We would like to have full rush jet for the end of the stage, if possible. And we're also going to need maybe some more of those magnet missiles. Nice. Those items are random though, so they could be anything when you play. Down here, we'll want to hit this Hammer Joe again to take him out. And then we're going to go up the left ladder. And wow, we're just getting all kind of weapon energy here. 
up this ladder, we'll fight another one of those big snakies, and I'll show you the normal way to fight it this time. You can use your hard knuckle and jump and shoot it and then hold up a little bit to angle it up at the snakey's face. It only takes two hard knuckles to kill it. Walk right slowly here so you don't walk into the vaulting pole that the Boo Boo Khan drops. And there's going to be another one, so watch out for him as well. That's actually a pretty far jump, so if you're not very confident, you may want to use a rush coil or a rush jet to get across there, but you don't actually need it. Climb up this ladder, and there is a new enemy, a Jamasi. A Jamasi is like a bug that crawls on ladders, and it can be easily removed with your shadow blades. Up here, I recommend using Rush Jet if you have it fully powered up. If it's not full, you'll want to wait to launch it until you're a bit farther to the right. The last bit is the hardest part. Once you get all the way over here though, you'll easily make it to the boss's room. Now, if you don't want to use Rush Jet there, or maybe you don't have enough weapon energy for it, you want to ride these platforms as far up on the screen as you can, so that you can get a good jump over to the next one. So jump over and wait for the platform. These cloud enemies are called Bomb Flyers, and you mostly want to avoid those. So you want to jump, and you want to hit that one in the air, which will turn it into a bullet, and cause it to move quickly. You can strategically turn these into bullets, so that they'll fly over your head, and that's what we want to do here. Shoot that enemy, and then jump over this one as you jump to the last platform. And this is it. This is Snake Man. So let's equip our Needle Cannon, and get ready to battle him. He's going to run from the right over to the left pretty much every time, and you just want to start attacking him right away with the Needle Cannon. He won't deal you that much damage, especially with the snakes, so if you just keep up the heat on him with the needles, he will go down very quickly. And that's it, we did it! We finished the last boss! So it should be time for some castle levels, right? Well, first let's talk about the search snakes. They shoot out little snakes that will travel along walls, and they actually are more useful than you would think. But we're not going to any castle levels yet. No, no. First we have to take on some extra difficult versions of levels we've already played. We can do these in any order, so I chose the Gemini Man stage first. In here we'll fight the typical Nitron enemies, but there are no more Pepe Bombers, instead we just have to deal with these insect-like Jamasi enemies. Keep making your way to the right, and you'll notice that there are a lot more gaps in the ground this time around. And when you get about this far, it seems like it may be a good idea to switch over to Rush Jet. We definitely don't want to get hit by any enemies and fall into an instant death pit, so this is a very easy way to get across the top part of the stage. If you jump a lot while using the Rush Jet, you can minimize how much energy it uses, but in this section you may actually take wraparound damage from jumping off the top of the screen, so just stay on Rush and fly over to the end. There's no Proto Man this time, so just drop on down. If you want to collect that question mark, you can use your Rush Coil to jump up to the next ledge. Watch out for that Paton. It's just a small bit of energy, it doesn't super seem worth getting. So we're going to switch to our Needle Cannon, which is a very effective way to deal with these Egg and Pole enemies. The Needle Cannon shoots very quickly, so you'll be able to remove these eggs in no time. Just keep shooting a path through to the right. As long as you're up on top of the eggs, you won't fall down into the spikes below. You can use your Rush Coil over here on this side if you really, really need to get that question mark. I recommend bouncing up and clearing a few eggs, and then switching over to your Shadow Blade so that you can kill the pole enemies that are produced. Your goal is to just get a little bit of a foothold up there, so that you can jump up on top of that next row of eggs, and carve out a path to the question mark. The question mark could be anything, so it very well may not be worth all this effort, 
I kind of recommend just passing this by, but, you know, do what you got to do. If you really need to get that question mark, clear out these poles, jump up on that last egg, and grab it. Alright, it was a health refill, not bad. And once you're done, head on down the ladder and make your way to the left, then clear a path to the right. Your arm cannon is almost as effective as the needle cannon, so you don't have to switch over to that if you don't want to. And you would like to try to keep a platform of eggs there so that you don't have to use your rush coil to jump over to the other side. Just make your way across the bottom here. We can refill our needle cannon. These potons will drop some enemies on us. And here we come to a boss. Huh, that was quick. It appears that we're fighting Flash Man from Mega Man 2. Interesting. Flash Man here works just as he did in Mega Man 2. He'll be able to freeze you. And if we use the needle cannon and just pepper him as quickly as possible, he will go down very fast. But he's not the only boss here. Nope. He's just the first one. So whenever you get to the other side, use your rush coil to jump up and then switch to your magnet missiles to take out the enemies up here. Once we hit the water, we know what to do. Switch over to the Rush Marine. In the water section in the previous Gemini Man stage, there was an open pit in the bottom, not spikes. Now, if you actually were damaged and you fell on the spikes, your invincibility frames could keep you alive. This part's actually easier than it was before. Over here we can switch to our Shadow Blades. They will make the going a little bit easier up ahead. Up here these Jamasi enemies will try to knock you around. Make sure to clear that one that comes down the ladder before jumping over the open pit. You don't want to get knocked back and fall in there. Head down this ladder, and this room isn't actually that difficult, you just want to stay at the top, then jump over to the left and climb down the ladder. And that's it! We've reached the second boss. Each one of these stages is going to have two Mega Man 2 bosses, and the second one here is Bubble Man. We can use Shadow Blades in a similar way that we would have used Metal Blades in a previous game. You'll just have to get a bit closer. It's very effective to shoot them upward when you're underneath Bubble Man. And with just a few blades, Bubble Man will be popped, and we will be on to the next stage. Unfortunately, we don't get the Mega Man 2 powers. How cool would that have been? The next challenging level that we're going to face is Needle Man's. Needle Man stage now has this slick night theme to it, but the enemies are mostly the same. Did you know that you can use the Spark Shock to freeze these Hari Hari enemies? It's not super useful because it's hard to jump over them, but it is interesting to see. Use the Gemini laser to take them out in a single shot, and you'll see there's an open spike pit here which lets you know that they mean business this time. Slide under this overhang, but be careful of the needle presses on the other side, and you'll want to just jump up on the edge of these platforms to avoid the needle presses again. You should just be able to walk under these ones. Pretty simple. And on the other side, you can use your rush coil if you simply must get that health up there, but you'll want to jump to the corner of the platform so you don't hit that needle press, otherwise you may take more damage than you gain. Climb up this ladder, and if you want to get that extra life, you don't want to use your rush jet on this screen. Instead, you'll want to use it on the next one so that you can get an energy tank, and then you can just drop down on the right and pick up that extra life. But it's not very necessary anyway, so I'm just going to skip it over. But you definitely want to get this energy tank. So use your rush jet, fly over and grab it, and if you want the extra life, you can just jump down to the right there. But we're just going to move on up the ladder. And up here, through another Hari Hari enemy, we'll find the first boss room. We'll fill up our rush jet a bit more before we enter, but this time it's going to be Airman. And Airman's weakness in this game is the Spark Shock. Just like in Mega Man 2, he's going to send out three patterns of tornadoes, and we want to jump over those and then start shooting at Airman. 
So jump over, start shooting. You can't shoot through the tornadoes, so don't even try, they will block your shots. After three patterns of tornadoes, he'll jump towards you, and now that we're closer to Airman, he will be much easier to defeat. On the other side, make sure your rush jet is full, because it's time for some flying. I used to think this part of the game was difficult, but if you actually just go all the way to the top of the screen and just keep jumping, you will use a minimal amount of weapon energy from your rush jet, and you may even wrap around sometimes and pick up some of those weapon energies on the bottom, but just look how little energy we're using and we're covering so much ground. You just have to go all the way to the right here, so just stay at the top and keep on hopping and pick up a few weapon refills if you need them. We can refill some of our weapon energy here. If you don't have enough rush jet to fly up to the ladder, make sure that you fill up that first. And once you get up there though, you won't need rush jet anymore. We're going to fight some mini bosses, and we're going to use search snakes for that. This is the giant me tool. You want to get right up onto that plus sign on his helmet and rapidly attack with the search snakes. You may take a little bit of damage, but that is the best way to take that guy out. Otherwise, he'll start launching enemies at you. You just want to finish him off quickly. We're going to have to fight another one of those mini bosses, so keep your health high as you go across this section and use an energy tank if you need it. Here we can use our snakes again, jump and shoot at the plus sign, and wow that was way too close. Probably should have used an energy tank. In any case, there's a health refill on the other side, and this is the boss's room. This time it's going to be Crash Man, and the weapon of choice is the Hard Knuckle. At the beginning of the fight you can just shoot the Hard Knuckle out and you should be able to get an easy cheap hit on him. But then you want to stay fairly close to the boss. If you miss with the hard knuckle, you won't be able to shoot it again until it goes off screen. But if you stay very close, you can hit him with it quite quickly. So fast that it doesn't even appear on the screen. And that's it. Two down, two to go. This time we're going to go to Shadow Man stage. Shadow Man stage has certainly gotten a lot spikier since the last time we were here. If you clip one of those, it's instant death, so carefully make your way between the two rows of spikes. And then when you jump off here, you don't want to go too far left, because there's more spikes at the bottom. Shoot that Peter Chi and jump onto the ladder, take it all the way to the top, and then make sure not to jump off this ladder when you're in the middle of it. Down here on the right we'll meet another Bicky. We can clear him with one shot of our hard knuckle. You can also kill these Peter Cheese with a single hard knuckle, but they're just as easy to remove with the arm cannon. Over here there's going to be another difficult platforming section that we can skip using the rush jet. So just rush jet your way across this, take out that darkness spot when you're up in the air, and if you jump a lot up at the top of the screen, you know that it will reduce the amount of weapon energy that we use on our rush jet. So just keep on moving over to the right, and once you get to the end, you can drop off. Now if you want to do it the old fashioned way, you can't linger on those platforms for very long, and you need to make sure that you take strong jumps where you hold down the button and get as far as you can to the next one. Here you want to get to the top, so carefully make your way up there, and then that platform actually touches the end, so it's very easy to make the last jump. Climb down this ladder, and we will come to the first boss. This one is Woodman. The Needle Cannon is your best bet against Woodman, so that's what we're going to equip. And it's difficult to beat Woodman without taking some damage, so I think the best way is to just lean into it, go right up to him, jump through, and shoot him from behind very quickly and at close range. When you get hit again, go through to the other side and continue to pelt him with the Needle Cannon, and you can take him out in two cycles. If you have to go a third cycle, it could get dicey, so try to kill him as quickly as possible. 
The hard knuckle will kill these hammer joes in a single hit, and you can even angle it upward from a lower platform which makes it even easier. You can use hard knuckles against these parasayus as well, but I think the best way to actually defeat them is to use the magnet missiles. So let's switch over to those. A single magnet missile will take them out and the mecha caros, which will make this section so much easier. Just clear any enemies you see and move forward. You can fill up your magnet missiles if you want, but that's the end of the stage. Use the Gemini Beam to take out this giant Springer. And we've come to the second boss's room. Appropriately, this time it's Heat Man. I think Heat Man may have had some influence on the design of this level. We use the Shadow Blades to beat Heat Man, and we want to be a master of his pattern. At the beginning of the fight, he'll throw some fire at us, get close, hit him with the Shadow Blades, and then slide away. Wait for him to come towards you, jump over him, hit him with the Shadow Blades, and then slide away. This is the way you'll beat him, just keep doing this over and over again. Make sure that you jump over him, then attack, then slide away. That'll give you enough space to make sure that you can avoid him whenever he throws the fire, and also will give you enough time to jump over him when he comes flaming at you. And with that, there's only one more Doc Robot stage left. Sparkman. They've made a lot of upgrades to Sparkman stage to make it more difficult, and they even took away the ladder at the beginning of the stage? What are we going to do? Use the Shadow Blades to take out that Peter Chi, and then use the Rush Coil to bounce up to the next platform. Whew, glad we figured that one out. Use your Shadow Blades to take out this Jamasi enemy, and just keep making your way up the ladder. Jump over to the right, and if you need a refill of health, you can use your Rush Coil to bounce up there, but to be honest, we haven't gotten in a lot of fights yet. Shadow Blades will help you with these Alekans, take them out with a single hit, and you can kind of jump onto those rotating platforms to move forward, but you don't have to. Instead, we can just use a little bit of Rush Jet here, and just float over. That'll keep us safe, and then we'll just slide on to the next section. Use Rush Jet here if you want to, but three quick hops will get you across, and it's not as difficult as it may look. Use your Gemini Beam to take out this giant Springer, and then slide under this overhang and take out another one. Another slide will take us to the first boss's room. Not too many Mega Man 2 bosses left. This time we're going to equip our Magnet Missiles, because it's time to fight Metal Man. We're just going to stay on the left side of the screen and simply shoot the magnet missiles at a slow, even pace. We don't want to shoot them too fast because he'll get some invincibility frames and then we'll waste magnet missiles. But Metal Man is actually pretty easy. Slide through here and then hold a bit left to go down this shaft, carefully avoiding the spikes. When we get to the bottom here, we'll switch back to our Shadow Blades. There's going to be some boltons. Remember that you can't damage them until they're fully locked together. We're getting very close to the end of the level here, and we don't want to waste a lot of health before we get to the boss, so just make sure to take out any boltons that you encounter before you move forward, or they'll chase you like this one will, see? So make sure you take them all out, or they'll just keep coming for you. Carefully make your way to the right. This one's tough to get through. If you get hit, not that big of a deal, but you want to try to save as much life as possible. Jump across here, and then just keep moving to the right. You can actually just walk off of this box and you'll land on the right side. And over here, we'll finally make it to the boss. This time, we want to use our Gemini Beam, and this is the most difficult of the Mega Man 2 bosses. This is Quick Man. Don't be afraid to use an energy tank here if you need it. The Gemini Beam is very effective against Quick Man, but if you miss, you won't be able to shoot it again until it flies all around the room and either connects with the boss or dissipates. 
So try to stay close and hit him at short range, and you should be able to finish off Quick Man. Although that was very, very close. And that's it. That was the last one. Who was behind all of these Mega Man 2 bosses that we know were originally designed by Dr. Wily? Hmm. Who could have done this to us and made us fight those bosses again? Was it Proto Man here? No, no, I don't think so. Yep, you figured it out. Dr. Wily stole Gamma, the giant robot we were making for peace. Why we were making a giant fighting robot for peace, I don't know. But Dr. Wily has clearly been up to something the entire time. I don't think he built a giant skull castle in the last few hours, so let's just say that this was probably premeditated. Will we ever learn to not trust Dr. Wily? Compared to the previous stages, the first level of Skull Castle isn't actually that hard. And we can even get an extra life if we use Rush Coil and jump over this wall to the left at the very beginning. Nice. Use your Shadow Blade to take out these Komasaburu enemies by attacking them at an angle. There's only two of them, and if we jump from the ladder on the far right over here, we'll be able to get an energy tank. So carefully hop over and grab it. And then down here, we will encounter the last water area in the game, aside from the boss here, so there's no reason to not use your Rush Marine to cross over this section safely. Just make your way over to the right using your Rush Marine, firing at any pen pens you see. Once we emerge from the water, we can switch to our hard knuckle and climb the ladder on the right. Using the hard knuckle, we can destroy these walls, and then you can jump from the ladder and collect the extra life. Make your way up here, hard knuckle will take out these walls as well, and this time we can get some more health, as well as an energy tank. Not only that, but we can also refill the hard knuckle, so it's pretty much free. We'll use our knuckle, take out that energy tank wall, and then take out this one, which will fill us back to full. Climb up this ladder, and we can use the hard knuckle to take out another hammer Joe, and then just slide off those platforms to the right. Jump over that hammer Joe and take him out with a hard knuckle. The best way to defeat the last hammer Joe is to hit it with two magnet missiles. Then use your rush coil to get up on the platform above. Climb up the ladder, and we're not going to mess around with these Yoku blocks. Just use your rush jet and fly around them. Fly around and take the ladder in the upper left. And here is the boss's room. We can fly up to the top there and get some more weapon energy if we need it. Uh, maybe some hard knuckle. And to defeat the boss here, we want to use top spin. This is the Kami Goro Maker. It's going to release a turtle bot, and you want to jump up and hit it with your top spin. If you're not comfortable with top spin, you can try your shadow blades, but top spin will take out each one of these turtle bots in a single hit. So this is the best way to go about it. You don't actually have to hit the boss at the top at all. Just take out the turtle bots, and it'll explode. And with that, we're on to Skull Castle Part 2. Take the ladder on the right side if you want an opportunity to refill your weapons. Just like in other Mega Man games, they do not refill your weapons between the castle levels, so this is a good opportunity to do this. Head over to the left and climb the ladder over there, and you'll be able to grab an extra life. Just quickly jump on this platform that splits in the middle, and jump off to the other side to get the one up. Up here we'll need to slide, and we'll get right past these obstacles no problem. But we should probably equip our shadow blades, because there are some of those bee enemies over here. In this instance we want to try to despawn as many of them as possible. This time we were left with two, but if we move far enough left we can despawn the bees entirely. 
that's the best way to deal with those. And you want to make sure that you have full rush jet before you move forward, because we need to do a little bit of flying here. This is almost the end of the stage, so this is a pretty short one. And there are a lot of power-ups here, including two energy tanks. Yeah, that's right. The next boss is going to be a tough one. It's the Yellow Devil Mark II. So make sure to fill up on whatever you can and switch over to your Shadow Blades. It's time to fight that monster. Just like with the original Yellow Devil, the pieces of the monster will start flying in from the left side of the screen. Avoid them, but once they're put into place, you can actually touch those pieces until the monster is nearly completely formed, so you can kind of hang out here right underneath the eyeball, and once you take damage, you know the eye's about to open up, and you can rapidly attack it with your shadow blades from underneath. Now, you can kind of hide within the monster again on the left side, but this time we're going to move out from within it so we don't take damage when there's about three pieces left. Stand right in front of it and attack at an angle with your shadow blades, and that's an even safer way to deal a lot of damage. And with that, you can defeat the Yellow Devil in just two cycles. We're on to Skull Castle Part 3, and the boss of this one will be much easier than that boss. We can use our Shadow Blades to take out this Shot Man from below, and then use Rush Coil to bounce on up. We'll take the ladder on the right side, and up here we'll have the opportunity to use our Hard Knuckle if we want to get some weapon refills. We can also grab an Energy Tank. Nice. Use your Rush Coil to bounce up on top, and then make your way to the right. This time we can use some Magnet Missiles to take out the Darkness Bots before they even get going. Up here we can grab an Extra Life, use some Magnet Missiles to take out the Darkness Bots so that we can see, and you just want to try to avoid those Walking Bombs. That's the easiest way to deal with them. Drop down here, there's no reason to fight that Hammer Joe. And here we can use a Hard Knuckle to take out this Bicky. Another Bicky awaits on the right side. Climb up this ladder. And this is the most dangerous obstacle in the stage. Carefully make your way up the platforms. And over here you need to make your way up the left side. So pick your spot and quickly jump up there. We can use the Rush Coil to get up on top. And then use the Hard Knuckle to open up this wall. Hopefully we'll get some good prizes out of those question marks. Let's see what we get. Right. Nothing good, and nothing good. Well, it's no big deal. We have 15 lives right now and 9 energy tanks. I think we're going to be okay. And here's the boss. Switch to top spin, and you just want to go all the way to the top and use top spin on the top boss. And you'll one-shot him. It's that easy. It's always the top one first. Now, if that's just too simple, you could try using Search Snake. Go all the way to the top and rapidly attack with Search Snake. And, well, yeah, I mean, that's pretty easy too. The Triple Clone Mega Men? Just not a very difficult boss. We are very close to the end now. Make sure to fill up all of your weapons. The Capsule Room is coming up, so we're going to have to fight all of the bosses again. We can grab some more Shadow Blades with that big weapon refill. And we're going to keep them on. The Shadow Blades are quite effective against these Junk Golems that we're going to have to fight down here. So take out that Junk Golem and then slide on under that. If you need some more health, you can hook your jump around and you can get up there. But it's not necessary. Just slide on through here and rapidly attack the Golem at an angle. And there are two Junk Golems in this room, so don't miss that second one that appears above the ladder. Climb on down and head on through the gate. And we've made it to the Mega Man 3 Capsule Room. Alright. Drop on down, and it's time to fight those bosses. So who should we take on first? 
with the hard knuckle, we can finish off top man. And this guy is going to be very easy. Just use the same strategy that we used at the beginning of the game, except this time we're going to be hitting him with the hard knuckles, which deal a lot more damage than our standard arm cannon. After just a few shots, he'll go down, and we'll be able to grab a big health refill, which will put us back to almost full. With this much health, we can try a harder boss, so we'll fight Snake Man in the upper right corner. Rapidly attack him with the Needle Cannon, and try to stay far away from him so that you don't get hit by his body. The snakes don't deal a lot of damage. Now that he's defeated, we'll head over and take the top left capsule, where we can fight Needle Man. I still think I like the Gemini laser against Needle Man here, although you could theoretically also use Needle Man's weapon, if that's something you'd like to try. Down in the lower right corner, we can fight Shadow Man, so use your top spin against him. Try to attack him when he's in the air and minimize the amount of damage you take. Four capsules remain. We can use our magnet missiles to fight Hard Man here. And one thing that is important to note when you're fighting the bosses here in the capsule room, you don't want to end the fight standing on top of the exit, or you might miss out on the health refill that the boss drops. So don't be standing right on top of the exit door whenever you finish off any of these bosses. We're going to fight Gemini Man now, and we didn't have the Search Snakes last time, and they're actually a superior weapon against him, at least as far as number of hits go. We can use a similar pattern though, just stand in the middle of the room and jump over the Gemini Men, and attack rapidly with the snakes. We can also try an alternate weapon against Magnet Man. We used Shadow Blades the first time, and I do think Shadow Blades are the way to go, but it does take the same number of hits to hit him with the Spark Shock. So if you'd like to conserve your blades, you could try using the Sparks instead. And that leaves us with just one more capsule. Hook up the Shadow Blades, it's time to face Spark Man again. Rapidly attack Spark Man with your Shadow Blades. It's nice when he stays on the right side of that wall so you can attack him through it. And that's it. We've defeated all eight bosses. In this Mega Man, we don't actually have to fight Dr. Wily in this stage. We just get to grab an extra life and head on to Skull Castle Part 5. Skull Castle Part 5 is just a boss. It's a two life bar boss, something that we've kind of come to expect from Mega Man at this point. So make sure to fill up whatever weapons you might need. We're going to be using Search Snake and Hard Knuckles against this guy. So fill up with whatever you can, switch over to your snakes, and drop down. It's time to fight the pin bot. Wait for the leg to lift and then slide under it. The vulnerable part is going to be right in the middle underneath the robot. Rapidly attack it with the snakes and then get out of there. You'll probably take some damage, but we can switch over to our hard knuckle and then you can shoot it and angle it upward at Dr. Wily or angle it down a bit if he crouches down. It only takes a few hard knuckles to take him out. And that's it. We've done it. We've defeated Dr. Wily. Or have we? No. It was just Robot Dr. Wily. We still have to face Gamma. As far as Mega Man Final Bosses go, this one is on the easy side. You can fill up your weapons here if you want to, I would prioritize getting Shadow Blades first if you don't have enough of those, but you probably won't need too much weapon energy to beat this boss. Definitely grab any energy tanks that you see, and then head on through the gate. It's time to face Gamma. 
we're going to need to use shadow blades for the first phase of the boss. And what you want to do is get right underneath the middle of it, jump and attack upwards with the shadow blades. It shouldn't be too hard to avoid its shots, they don't seem to hit very much in the middle. At the halfway point, Dr. Wily appears, and let's just not waste any time. Use Rush Jet to fly up to the top, and then we're going to jump attack him with Pop Spin. Right in the middle. And that's it. It only takes a single hit to defeat him with Pop Spin. Now, if you think that's a little bit too easy, here's a little bit more of a traditional pattern. You can come up here and also use Search Snake. You need to jump with a bit of momentum behind you and throw the snake at the top of your jump and then try to pull yourself back to the right so you don't have to climb up there all over again. It doesn't take too many snakes to defeat Dr. Wily this way, but the top spin method is much, much easier. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten Mega Man 3. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Did... did they kill Dr. Wily? Well, it seems that we survived, and we were rescued by Proto Man. It seems that Dr. Light has known who Proto Man was this entire time. And that's because he's the one who made him. So now we'll see a list of the robots made by Dr. Wright. Although, of course, in Japanese, the L and the R sound for Light or Wright is pretty much the same, so I can understand why they would use them interchangeably. It is kind of weird to me, though, that Dr. Wright, or Dr. Light, whatever you want to call him, would make his prototype robot in the style of a Sniper Joe enemy from Mega Man 1. I mean, that's essentially what Proto Man looks like, right? He has the shield, he has the visor. That's a question I don't have answers to. And as the scene fades out, Mega Man looks up into the sky and contemplates for the first time what it means to have a brother. Roll credits. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Mega Man 3 and put an end to Dr. Wily's nefarious plot. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because Dr. Wily will always be coming back with more themed robots for us to battle. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.